rates go up far enough, yeah, you'll pop the bubbles that you have now. The only question remaining is when does the Fed come back in with a, uh, a massive amount of quantitative easing? The land of Arcadia. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on Friday, March 23rd for this week's Arcadia Market Wrap-Up and a pretty wild week in the market. Yes, we had the Federal Reserve always an adventure and certainly this week didn't disappoint it's kind of in some ways a big fed meeting just because you know we've started that next portion of how things are going to unfold as we're seeing rates rise uh, and in fact if you go to arcadia's homepage here you'll see if rates rise what happens to stocks um because all these things are tied together as we saw this week so to recap, there's Jerome Powell and Fed raises rates and signals faster pace in coming years. So like I've mentioned on some of the previous videos here, so far Powell has said that, I mean, given the impression that he's basically going to be as aggressive, <laughs> that's an understatement, <laughs> but rather at least go according to the somewhat non-aggressive yet slow, methodical, and somewhat consistent pace that Janet Yeldon been raising rates at. Um, and as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, there was a meeting where Powell was talking in front of Congress and he gave, uh, at least the media picked up the impression that he might even go faster than expected and you saw a yield spike. So, in an important meeting in the sense to find out what's really the next stage of what's going to happen because the past couple months we've seen as rates have gone up in uh, tenure nearing three percent all of a sudden the stock market's running into trouble and we're seeing signs of really the first signs of trouble in the real estate market it's gonna be interesting to see how that data unfolds over the coming months but Back to Powell, is he going to continue to allow this to happen? I continue to believe at some point when you have enough trouble in the markets, the Fed will come in and print a lot more money. But at least for now, uh, interesting to see that so far Powell going ahead. Here we see they could pick up the pace of interest rate increases. Uh, officials said they expect it to lift another two to three times this year. They raise rates. If the Fed actually raised rates another three times this year, which I still see as possible, but not likely, um, I meant another three times next year, but certainly just three times this year alone, um, you would think that would have quite an impact on uh, rates going up in general. And if it's at the same time they're unwinding their balance sheet, then Certainly, if all of those things were to occur, then that would certainly increase the probability that 2018 or maybe earlier sometime in 2019, but even more so 2018, you would finally see some sort of crash to some of these bubbles. Um, and what happened? Let's take a look over at CNBC here. During the meet, uh, right as he was releasing this, 10 year treasury yield tops 2.9 briefly after Fed hikes. So, again, an event from the Fed giving the impression that rates tightening may go on at least as expected, if not faster than expected. So, rates spiked a bit yesterday. Um, which means the price of the bonds was down. It actually reversed a little bit later uh, in the day, which we'll get to uh, a couple stories in on this video here because there's another big whopper going on in the markets and all these are playing together now. Here you can see uh, the yield at 2.8%. So actually here on uh, the chart where, there we go. Uh, you can see it spiked up uh, to about 2.89 and then today has really come in quite a bit uh, because of the trade war news which we're about to get to but again why is all of this important how does it fit together let's take a quick look back at a story we had a couple months ago 
where there was a report that China was considering slowing or halting purchases of US treasuries. And we have this quote that I often come back to here, which I will read if I may. The officials recommended that the nation closely watch factors such as the outlook for the supply of US government debt. <laughs> In other words, are these guys just gonna slam the market with so much paper that, uh, you know, which of course is pretty much exactly what's happened, along with political developments, including trade disputes between the world's two biggest economies when deciding whether to cut treasury holdings. So I kind of hopped in the middle here, but basically what you're hearing is China's deciding, allegedly, I'll back here in, I wasn't there in the room, but whether to stop buying as much US paper based on is the supply gonna be insane? And also, how are the, <laughs> how's the relationship going? You know, I mean, they're financing the debt. You know, maybe if everyone's playing golf and things are good, um, keep that going for a while. But it's fascinating, the talk of U.S. debt, now that it's circled past $20 trillion, we already have uh, the targets talking about $30 trillion now. So here, U.S. debt to hit $30 trillion in 2028 under the Trump budget. Uh, which, of course, is truly stunning in and of itself. A few quick thoughts. A, if they think it's going to be $30 trillion by 2028, that means it's probably $40 trillion by 2025. Keep in mind, uh, it was actually about $5 trillion when the second George Bush came into office in 2001, I believe. Uh, I guess, yeah, it would have been January of 2001, I think. When he left, it had doubled, uh, slightly under uh, double to around 10 trillion. Obama doubled that again to over 20 trillion. So, you know, again, it's, it's amazing when you actually look into some of these projections, some of the assumptions that are used. So that could even be a generous version of how the numbers would play out. So we, here we have Thursday's news that Trump has slapped China with tariffs on up to 60 billion in imports. This is the first of many. Well, now to the degree that there's a school of thought going around that a lot of what we have been seeing is not really representative of perhaps what's going on. Um, again, referring to that school of thought that Trump well, certainly saying some silly things at times, has really been put in place primarily to, I guess, the bull in the China shop to the deep state, um, and basically just come in there and tear down a lot of the manipulation and uh, deep state influence that's been going on. So <laughs> whoever knows uh, what's the real twist behind these things, but again, at least to the degree that we take it on its face value, the idea that you have your largest creditor who's given every indication that they want to walk away from the auction, and now you're starting a trade war would certainly not be too ideal economically. Um, here you see Dow drops more than 700 points on trade fears. Um, again, you know, do these things really play out? Does he change his mind a month from now? Of course, all these things are possible. We don't really know yet. To the degree that should uh, this type of thing actually continue in any sort of substantial amount, um, would not be a good thing economically. Um, and certainly to your largest creditor, just it, it's just one more factor adding to all these other things of why stocks are getting clobbered as rates are going up. And then if you have China saying that they're not gonna buy treasuries, that means rates are going to go up even faster, which you would see more headlines like Dow dropping. Um, so, again, that's why that Fed meeting was so important, because at least for now, it's saying the green light is on to see rates rise, which, you know, is going to cause more trouble with stocks and real estate. And really, 
a simple way of looking at it version of it would be that should that continue you would eventually if rates go up far enough yeah you'll pop the bubbles that you have now the only question remaining is when does the fed come back in with a, uh, a massive amount of quantitative easing or basically just reversing course lowering interest rates again because ultimately that's what's going to happen but at least until then you keep pushing rates up especially while launching a trade war you're seeing what will happen so uh, again we see here now this was what we mentioned before that you had yields basically spike after Powell was done talking and then the yield actually dropped quite a bit not the lowest in six but drops the most in six months on fears that trade disputes will slow the economy again if something's slowing the economy then that's when the Fed usually starts talking more about printing money lowering interest rates so Certainly, you have these factors playing back and forth. So does this change the Fed's plan? We shall see. Um, but if you want to hear a little bit more about how all these pieces are fitting together, I actually did do an interview on the Daily Coin, a great uh, website for a lot of gold and silver and Austrian economics content. Plus, we had a uh, real preview of the Fed meeting. Uh, and. Uh, so you can see what we said before, before it all went down. And I don't know, let's see if I'm getting any of this stuff right. I don't know, I think a lot of it, fortunately, you don't have to take my opinion for it. A lot of this is pretty straightforward and simple when you see the different pieces that are playing together, which is what hopefully I've highlighted in this video. And actually the interview is a lot of fun. So go listen to it. There you go, Daily Coin, And you can type Chris Marcus in, you'll pull it up. And Rory does a great job over there. So thank you again to Rory. It was a good time this week. Um, lastly, a quick check on our alternative asset markets. Here's Bitcoin, about 8400 bucks. So not the best of the days for cryptos, but they're going back and forth. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, again, just thinking if they went up as much as they did last year, even, you know, forget the 20,000 coming back to 10,000 or 8,000 Bitcoin. But even just if you've seen that much movement and we're still at the beginning of all of these unresolved forces, which we've been talking about here for the last 10 minutes, then when there's finally some sort of resolution, whether that is this year or maybe, maybe my timing's off and it's 10 years from now, but you see that there's a combination of events that, lead to a predictable outcome and again when the stock market sold off earlier in january we saw a lot of investor outflows i think that's going to continue that's why money was going into the markets last year because i think people can see where this is headed unfortunately so at least for what it's worth to me i think we're going to look back at 159 fifty nine dollar litecoin and say wow you can buy litecoin for 159 bucks i don't think it'll be too far off in the future that we'll see some movement there um certainly i am still holding my litecoin and then lastly in our gold and silver markets again another week of pretty much not too much happening price wise um but again, you know, you're near the floor of these things. So uh, certainly if you have a time horizon of two years, I would say, maybe two years or longer, basically so that you can think of it as a form of savings. Similarly to, I remember a couple of times when I was younger getting a savings bond as a gift for the birthday or graduation. And I mean, theory, like the concept was that, you know, you could give someone something and they earn interest as they save their money. They actually get a yield on it, which that concept died when we got the 0% interest rates. Um, but again, kind of a similar profile with gold and in my opinion, especially silver, where Let's say you have someone that you want to give them something that they can save that has a chance of appreciating in probably well in excess, but still in that same manner that you used to get out of having 
a savings bond that actually did have a yield. Um, silver at 16 and a half bucks. I, <laughs> I still think we're gonna look back on uh, the way the events unfold in the silver market as one of the most fascinating stories in financial history, which at some point I do expect three figure silver prices, in other words, over a hundred bucks. Um, if we did have a truly free market silver environment, um, I think the numbers would be pretty stunning, especially if it's happening at the same time that the other markets are unraveling and Fed's printing more. Keep in mind when you see these price targets for gold and silver, there's what it would theoretically be worth today with X money supply and all other conditions being equal of course, if the Fed comes out with QE5, 6, and 7 because its higher interest rates have popped the real estate mortgage and bond bubbles, then of course those numbers in dollar prices for silver, gold, cryptocurrencies, or other commodities that are still going to be used readily, all those numbers get bigger. And that's why I like gold and silver and cryptos and all this other good stuff. So hopefully you found this helpful today. Leave your questions below. And thanks for watching. We will see you again next week. The land of Arcadia.